everybody and welcome to Free Wheel Station, 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 Station. We get like the uh, station. opening. We get the opening music and we get like the title shot come across and we get like the pan around view of the, you know, various planets and their moons and the drage system. And we go to this space station. It looks a little bit like a bicycle wheel in the, and it's kind of like got sections of it that look like it's there, an obvious need of repair um, that you clearly can't get from one spot to another in some places. And we see a little bit of, uh, a little bit of traffic, um, but we and like as the camera like swoops down around, we see like the the wrench that's welded into the frame on the outside come out on the other side and get the title logo freewheel station. And when we come in, we come in to the in an interior shot, and it's kind of a uh, it's a sorry, it's a we see a ca a, a room with a ca a table. In the middle, like a long table, and it looks like it's some kind of conference room, but there's only like Philip and Kurad are sitting down in chairs that look like that, you know, in chairs. But most of the other chairs that were bolted to the floor are gone. Like maybe Kib is like finishing bolting on his own chair so he can sit down as we come into the shot, um, and. Yeah, the the rest of the room kind of looks like it needs some repairs. Like maybe it was not really used for a conference room in the previous occupants, or if it was, they just didn't take very good care of it. Um, and certainly, quite a bit of stuff was, um, you know, damaged or destroyed in here. Uh, there's what remains of what looks like it was at one time a bar that your people have sort of dissembled here. It was a really poor attempt at a bar anyway. Um, but the, uh, and it's being sort of like carted out by maybe some of your subordinates. And Kurad and Philip, the two of you are looking at like your data screens in front of you on the, like on the, the tables and whatnot. And it's kind of showing you a list of things and you know first of all it's been a week since you since the party um, and you've started to have an increase in uh, sort of traffic and business and right now what you are looking at is to it here you are looking at you have you weren't able to open negotiations with for business dealings with Bettina Klimlin or uh, or, uh, you know, point one colony was actively hostile. Um, Kib diplomatic faux pas and, and annoyed them even worse than they already were. Uh, the reclama remnant reclamation guild, the, or the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Rec reclaimers guild, they are, have gone to unfriendly. Um, the, uh, Captain Percival Worthy, you do have some business with him sort of as a port of call deal. Uh, that's sort of what I call it. Uh, you know, they come, they occasionally rent some rooms uh, if they need to. They resupply, they, you know, uh, uh, pay for some food while they're here and whatnot. Um, they, and he's friendly. The Amber Wreath seems indifferent. You have no business with them. Uh, the Girin Empire seems indifferent they didn't even bother to send a representative uh the hemwell colony who was it that talked to grandin the representative from the hemwell colony was it Kurad or Philip? you are muted sir um remind us of what that person looked like the it was the uh uh, the Oread, um, the, the Oread farmer from... Uh, the... I believe that was Korad. Okay, so, yeah, Korad, uh, Hemwell Colony, thanks to your, like, negotiations are friendly. Uh, they are currently, you know, selling you trade, food, some medical supplies, some game animals and whatnot, but then you know, enough to kind of get your business going a little bit, you know, it's not going to, 
Uh, the light, the crew of the Lightning Dragon, you have sort of a port of call deal. Uh, the Velquin Empire, and they're, the Lightning Dragon is friendly, the Hemwell Colony is friendly. The Velquin Empire, the Count and the Countess are unfriendly, but they did set Very up precise. trade. But they did set up trade with you guys for fuel, <laughs> uh, food. They're also, you know, selling you bodies. So some so the, you can buy. They have a nectar called the Eshvek ne nectar that they also um, have up for sale. Um, but they, yeah, that depends on whether you guys are buying any of that or not. But um, the uh, Versped Research Collective are in, indifferent to you guys. The Order of Cavoy, the um, Order That's of That's right. Yeah, huh? Those are the knights, right? Yep, those are the undead knights. Detention. Good. They are they're friendly with you guys. And Absolutely. They are uh, they trade they're trading you guys. They're buying necrographs and so they supply some bodies from undead they kill. And they also do a port of call with you guys to some extent. Uh the plasma scar, uh the crew of the plasma car scar, they're indifferent, but they will trade with you. They're mostly trading in pirated goods that they you know, steel and uh, port of call kind of deal. And the Jim Fish Trade Consortium is indifferent. You guys didn't make a good impression on them just yet. Uh, they, they didn't, they're not hostile or unfriendly or anything. They just don't see what the buzz is yet. Um, you, in addition to these trade deals, so you guys might want to make notes of these uh, so you can kind of keep an eye on where you're at. Um, the in addition to like these sorts of deals you have tons and tons of rooms you have about a dozen rooms rented at any given time right now um three or four of which are people who are renting because they just want to stay here they don't they're not looking to um you know some of the rooms you're renting are from like people who are passing through who don't want to stay on their ship while it's being worked on or they just want to have more room to stretch their legs or something you know but there are a few people who have kind of uh worked out you know a deal to stay a little bit more um solidly they're you know they're not part of your crew they're not part of the grim buckle alliance they're just residents who are essentially paying your organization a rental fee for a room um you know None of them are particularly important unless they need to be uh, for any reason. Um, but there's me and they've only been here for like maybe less than a week. Uh, and you are starting to see that this place does have a, the, this place's reputation for like people drifting through or, you know, utilizing this place as a way station uh, isn't exactly exaggerated. You know, half the people who have shown up here who have rented rooms from you didn't even know you guys were here or that the pirates had been here before you. They just knew that the station existed and sometimes people used it to hang out for a day or two and before moving on. Um, there are refugees from the Garin Empire that you see come through here, uh, mostly androids, tight-lipped bunch. They don't really, uh, they don't talk about their past in the Garin Empire. They don't, um, they don't really engage a whole lot other than to pass through. Uh, most of them are trying to find a, a route to trying to find their way to point one, um, uh, the point one colony. Um, Offer the, them passage to the core. The, um, the uh, Kurad, you do, you already have a, <clears throat> you already have had some, use for your in your medical bay um and both the lightning dragon and the plasma scar had to pay you a certain had to pay your organization a certain amount of money in the sense of uh because they needed your services almost immediately because two of their a member you know a member or two of their crew got into a fight with each other before you know when the in the cargo bay luckily the captains broke it up but the kobold has some deep lacerations and the knoll that he was fighting has a lot of like very on point burn, you know, severe burns and shit all over his body from where he was hit with lightning. Um, they, they fucked each other up pretty good. 
Um, but there's like he brought off the dragon. Yeah, something like that. Um, they're both they're both unconscious and healing in your uh, med bay right now, um, resting and whatnot. Um, so there's been a little bit of excitement already. Uh, the um, as as far as it goes, you guys are kind of looking at this uh, as it were. Um, your situation and, and what have you. And I want to give you guys a couple of minutes to table some discussions about what your next move is. So, you know, Philip, Kurad, you're both looking at this kid by this point. You're probably climbing into your seat and being able to see your, like, screen. Ah, secure him to his okay. chair. So, I've got the chair effective enough to where it'll be an effective chair. What are we looking at? I'm sorry. My chair needed to fit. It wasn't perfect, but it's fine now. If it's fine or not. I'm not sure how you're balancing on it at the moment. All right, it's a, a little chicken, but he's like, I got it. It's good. It's kind of doing that little wobbly thing. Kind of like, yeah, I got this. Oh, Philip, why are we here? Oh, yes, because Grandpa didn't kill us. Hmm. So, you've been busy taking care of kobolds. And you've been busy putting chairs in poorly. What have I been doing? Hmm. That reminds me. Just out of curiosity. It's been a week. Nope. I was wondering if I ever found that safe. I have not. But you mm. guys keep forgetting to do anything about that safe. Mm. So, where am I? I remember. Good, good, okay. Kurat. Yes. So what do you think? I mean, we've managed to make a little bit of profit so far in this last week. But we need to amp this up. I mean, we can't even get decent rations in this place yet. And if we're ever going to be able to afford aborts, we're going to have to make some money. Hmm. Now, we're not equipped to gather gases, because that would be probably our most advantageous deal. But, suppose we can compete with that little gnome and go look for some wreckage. Or, I mean, we well, can't create any wreckage. We don't have any weapons. Hmm. Kib. Yeah, Kib, that's you. Get off your game, girl. What? Okay. Sorry. What do you think? How are the pirates making money in this area before we came? Uh, stealing shit, taking people, and making them work for them. I see. I see. That wasn't helpful at all. Hmm. Come on. We got to be able to come up with some sort of a plan. It can't just be me in this. I've been told by the grandfather that we have to work together. At least you and me, Karad. By the way, those of you with a culture uh, skill can make culture checks now. Because this yeah. might be a helpful time to, you know, see if you know anything. I don't know anything. I'm just kidding. Let me Damn. See. Hmm. Culture, so, you say? So... All right, that's the second 11. Hang on, let me try something. Poop. Kurad. Okay. Kurad, you are aware of, uh, what you're aware of here is you spent, you actually paid a lot more attention than everybody else, it appears, because you've picked up on a few basic truths. The, uh, the, the, very clearly, the the first thing is very clearly the crew of the Lightning Dragon and the crew of the Plasma Scar don't exactly always get along and seem to see each other as competitors. The Velquin Empire 
most people are generally have a healthy fear of them. Uh, you've kind of picked up on the fact that the Velquin uh, veil, as they call it, the Velquin, uh, you know, shadow is a dimension that is very tied to the shadow, uh, is a uh, system that's very tied to the dimension of shadow. Um, you have also picked up on, you know, Hemwell colony and point zero colony don't always get along, but so they occasionally work together on things. Um, what you know about point one, because you spent some time talking to Granin, is that uh, point one is mostly refugees from the Gurin Empire. And the Gurin Empire are pretty big. Um, they're pretty powerful. They're also pretty insular, and they're also pretty, you know, uh, they're pretty xenophobic. Um, and from what people's understanding of the Gurin Empire, from what they can get out of the androids that make their way out, is that androids are created as a slave race there. And they are considered second-class citizens at best when they are freed. Um, and most of them that come to point zero are running from that, which is part of the reason that you can't find their colony, um, because both Himwell and point one discovered that there are um, that there are some elements, uh, there's a combination of elements on the planet that in certain places make detection, scanning much harder unless you have specific survey sensors. Um, so their colonies are a little bit better shielded, although the point one is somehow able to do it even better than Hemwell does, uh, something Hemwell has been trying to get um trying to get a little bit of a, a reach on um as far as it goes from what you understand you've all pretty much picked up on the fact that pretty much everybody in this system likes captain percival worthy they don't all trust him but they all seem to consider him at least something of a friend they all seem to be very have a a sort of warm feeling towards him uh the uh which is kind of how he brought a lot of people to the table. Um, Himwell, you know a little bit more about because your conversations with Granin. Uh, Himwell, they weren't exactly certain whether or not they even wanted to send anybody. Like it came down to a fairly narrow vote to send somebody that to 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 this thing to meet you guys. Um, so as far as, it, um, but they've been probably your best trading partner in terms of getting supplies the Velquin Empire is a little far away so it takes a bit of you know you haven't gotten but like one shipment from them so far and it's in dock right now but the Himwell colony is in system so it only takes you know a couple of days at most you know six days at most you know and to get to and from but the idea is that um the others have been sort of like trickling trade, like the plasma scars brought in a few, you know, a, a few shipments of like stolen, like uh, food and medical supplies, you know, but they haven't brought in like mass bulk that would be enough to support this station at full crew or anything like that. And him well has already explained that they're going to be a little slow on the uptake because they're up to this point have been used to producing for just their own colony. Um, you know, and now they're producing for, uh, they're going to try to produce a little extra to trade with you. The, um, the ones that the Himwell faction that didn't want to make trade, they were pretty much all about trying to maintain their anonymity, um, in the greater scan scale. They're not exactly, most of them don't seem like they're running from the Garin, but uh, enough of them, you know, from your understanding, those that are there, there are a few that do have reason to um, not want to attend, draw too much attention, but not necessarily from any particular one source or another. It just seems to be a collection point for people that are like, yeah, I pissed some people off I shouldn't have, and now I just don't want to be found. <laughs> So, you know, there's some there, but there, but like the other faction that voted in favor are people that are like, you know, pirates and raiders are pretty bad here and sort of slavers and, 
you know, if these people are going to try to do some organized, actual, legit business, maybe that'll help lend some stability. So it's a little bit different. Um, and most people don't seem to learn like the Versped Research uh, Collective all that much. Um, there are some people that seem to have a a bit of like aspiration towards the amber wreath, but nobody can tell you exactly. You know, none of them can tell you exactly what the amber wreath actually even does. As far as anyone's concerned, it's a collection of really wealthy people, of really wealthy hedonists who enjoy their comp each other's company. Um, but that's kind of uh, what you've picked up on so far. But you've also picked up on a few other minor details. There is a... Um, there is a group of uh, a small gang called the Red Booters that really doesn't have any friends in the system. Like they, they, they were an offshoot of a completely different, like some other pirate group. But they were like the guys that they were like, oh, we're gonna go farm our own pirate group. And the people were like that they were with were like, yeah, see you. And everybody else is kind of like, yeah, fuck them. Um, but the Red Booters are known for at this point, running a, a, a drug trade. Um, they are, you know, at this point, from your understanding, the drugs they sell are cheap, inferior drugs, and they're basically just a ripoff. Like, they're they're good if you don't, if, if you haven't had anything real for a while, but, you know... Um, and their and their operation is like they nobody like point zero do, or point one doesn't like them. Himwell doesn't like them, you know, because they cause trouble. And there's you know they're trying they're the they're sort of you know hawking their drugs and so in some of these places. Um, but you've heard that the red you you've heard that uh, they're probably about the red booters um, that. There's probably nobody gonna fucking miss them, um, but uh, there's uh, you'd also heard about like uh, the uh, potential for um, you'd also heard that there like you've you've heard about there being game on uh, the planet that Hemwell and Point One are on, uh, but you did hear there's um, and they're pretty you know solid. Uh, you oh hold on, that's what I'm forgetting. There were some other things that I had on my list that you guys hadn't heard about yet, but you now do. On um, the Red Booters have a shuttle called the Vaporous. So, uh, you are still muted, sir. Okay, uh, you you heard that you had heard that there is an old dragon of time, an old time dragon on one of the moons. Uh, the, you had heard. You've heard uh, that there is a uh, that there are a couple of different groups here that you, you didn't make it here that seem to be a bit of uh, uh, well known. There's the heralds of Xiphus. Who seem to be a doom cult? Really, they, from what everybody says, they really mostly just stand around and preach to everybody that doom is coming. That there's that there's some great calamity that is coming. Um, most people don't take them too seriously, um, although you know they do have a shady reputation. Um, you know, they're like, yeah, don't go anywhere alone with one of them, but most of the time all they're doing is saying that there's something bad going to happen. So, um, and then there's the winged chalice, um, which seem to be devotees of Arche, who is a celestial being. Um, and the winged chalice is another group of people that sound like a bunch of hedonists. Although they don't sound quite as, uh, uh, although they don't sound quite as, um, quite as as elitist as the Amber Wreath.
Oh no, the Amber Reese still feels like a uh, pyramid scheme. Though, if Bettina Klimlin is even considering being a part of it, it might actually be okay, but we are definitely below their grade at the moment. What do you think, Kib? Say stuff. Yeah. Well, you yeah. So, who are you? I don't know. It all sounds fun. Let's go. I don't know. I, I'm used to the year. We got stuff. We just went down, stole it. Somebody got in our way. We killed them. So, I, I, that's what I'm used to. It just seems that it would be an unwise decision to shit in our own backyard, so to speak. Especially since. There really isn't much backyard where we're at. Yeah, that might be why the pirates aren't here anymore. <laughs> Speaking of which, you've been with us for almost a month now. Why were you in the break? Well, technically, I got lippy with the pirate captain because he was all like, Hey, fix this. Hey, fix that. And I was like, hey, give me the materials to fucking fix it, you fucked hard. And he wouldn't. So I couldn't fix it. And then he got mad, so he threw me in there because I got lippy with him. That must be why he used your favorite wrench as materials to fix things. What? Well, remember how I've been having Ha do uh, surveillance on this thing? Ha! <laughs> Show him the video of the wrench. <laughs> Located at point Alpha Centauri 53153. Wrench, 10 millimeter. I don't know, Kib. Is the is the wrench welded to the frame on the outside your wrench, or is it a completely different wrench? Or is it your wrench, but not your favorite wrench? It's one of my wrenches. It's not my favorite one. It's part of a set, but yeah. I mean, oh. we can't really get that one back, because as I look at that, it's kind of... It's a structural support, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, damn. So, bravo on the quality of your equipment, at the very least, so. Yeah. Fine. I'll just accept. Uh, accept. All right. What about you? What about me? What do you think our best plan of advancement is? I suppose we could have some individuals shipped in and try to make this place a brothel and see if we can make money that way, but that doesn't seem like what we really want to do. No. I know you want to get supplies. Oh, definitely. And we have about 500 UPBs to do that with, but the problem is, is... We're still at that point where we're the new guys in town, and while some people are friendly, they don't trust us, and they don't have very much either. Do we have a synthesis bay on the ship? I forget. Let me look. Oh, shuttle. Remind me what's on you. It's a science lab and a tech workshop, and then... Cargo hold, and that's it. Yeah. Shuttle. Okay. So there isn't a census display there. Now, Jester, what did you say that there was a possibility that we didn't need, but we don't have an arcane laboratory either, do we? Mm. Mm. Station. Yeah, I think you can make serums of healing in an arcane laboratory, but poisons and, and uh, medicinals, you have to have a synthesis bay. Drugs, yeah. poisons, medicinals, all that stuff. Yeah, you get it. Uh, we have an arcane mortuary. Okay. Yeah. 
So we can't just make our own at the moment. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We do have a sense of the Sispe. It's under the brig. Uh. So we can craft medicine or poison. But mm. that also means we cannot add that to the services that we can do for ships, so long as they have the parts. Well, the UPBs. I mean, it's still us nickel and diamond, but at least it's stuff that we can. I can help. And you'll have to make it smart. Yeah. So. And the synthesis bay itself reduces crafting time by half. Okay. In lab. Course recycler. Synthesis bay. Okay. Yeah. All right, two docking ports. So, we can make our own drugs. We can make weapons if we need to. So, along with being a... <sighs> what is the word I've been using? Along with specializing in necrographs and graphs in general, we're also a special orders weapon manufacturer and purveyor of drugs. Oh. So, what we've actually just done is create even more turmoil with the red blood. Was that what you said they were called? The red, the red booters. Red booters, because we now make drugs better than they do. Hmm. Encourage, very... encourage yeah. if you know damn well if you sort of thing that for damn sure they probably have supplies that you they'd probably have some supplies that you might need as well that is a point because they if they're making drugs that a thing that they're going to have is the raw materials for stuff like that and a thing and equipment for that you know um whether you choose to take the equipment because you don't need it for the equipment but you just want to get it off the bit or burn it or whatever like at least like the supplies and stuff to help you get the you know your drug labs up and running they'd have stuff like that and you could try to find it elsewhere you know but there's definitely there's definitely the possibility that you could hit them because do we know where they live so to speak a, not at the moment Hmm. You, you may have to you may have to ask around to get some information on them. Well, let's start with everybody's pal. Uh, try to get a whole, send a message out to Captain Percival Worthy. No, but I'd love to send a wave. <laughs> yeah, you send. All right. Well, you you can send him. He, he is. Uh, yeah, you can send a message out for him. I uh, you know see if he get you know. Hmm. He's not currently on station. Like, he's off. Also, that's another thing we should invest in as soon as we can. We should make this a tower so we can get better messages and also uh, work in information. Um, that would right. come but, yes. Maybe get a couple more, um, oh, what are they? Anchors. Um, drift beacons. Eventually. Mm -hmm. But those are expensive. So. Let's see. Who else could we send this message to? Let's ask the fucking, uh, the little dudes. Are they still here? The lightning dragons? Yeah. yeah. The, they're, they're still in port. Both them okay. and the plasma scar are in, in port because they're still waiting on their crew members to heal. And it's Captain Kemp? No, that's not right. Uh, uh, Captain Krex of the Lightning Dragon Krex. and Captain Tawi of the Plasma Scar. Captain Krex? What is your location currently? Uh, it's good. It, it takes a, uh, a little bit for a well, I figured at this point yeah. that we'd have comms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's well, it's not that he—it's it, not that you can't reach him. It's that oh, he just doesn't know. answer right away. 
Well, he's he might have he like he probably has I think he has his hands full right now. Um, oh, okay. The, like, shouldn't we have someone that tells us when fight breaks out? Someone that's watching the cameras. One of them. Um, why am I forgetting everybody's name tonight? Let me open that. <clears throat> uh, not Captain Craig's. Not Percival. Ninvis, what's going on? Uh, oh, you uh, you call Ninvis? Well, actually, probably Colovian, honestly. I mean, she is the one with the brain. Okay. Colovian, yeah. are you currently watching uh, cameras? Uh, I'm watching cameras. I could, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of places we don't have cameras up and running yet. Fair enough. Do any of the cameras we currently have up and running have Captain Crix? Crex, Captain Crex on uh, view. Uh, not currently. I think he went on to. I think he boarded his ship a while back. And uh, uh, that it's possible that there. It's it's possible that he's still in there, but I haven't seen him leave the ship. Uh, leave the ship, or and it hasn't left dock. Okay. What about the cameras in the med bay? Is everything okay on there? And she comes back, she's like, just a couple of sleeping pirates. Okay. Well, if at any moment you see Crex come aboard, let me know. Until then, yeah. we're going to go run diagnostics in, on the engine. All right. All right. So... You guys have had a week. If anybody wants to make any checks for, like, profession checks or uh, any, um, you know, downtime activity checks or whatever. Um, that is true, Corrod. You have some actual chance to make some money because you've fixed some people. Yeah. Also, by the way, you guys as a group got 4,600 uh, credits be off the backs of your initial week of trading. Hey, we're rich suddenly. Well, something we got cash. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see what I can um, fleece off of these people in the med bay. Okay. All right. I got profession lab technician. I could have done that for a week. Yes, <laughs> yes you can. You, you, you really good. You know, if yeah. you have profession skills, it takes a week to earn some money, but you can make a skill check on that right. to see how much you earn because you've had a week. Yeah. You might actually uh, be able to make friends with Korod yet, depending on how good of a tech you are. So do you want me to do a medicine check on taking care of these guys for the week? See what I can get from their captains? Uh, yeah, you can use your medicine skill as a profession skill in this case. That's, that is totally acceptable. Well, I make a little, you make a lot more. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, profession. Oh, wait, I am not even in the right place at all. I'm completely in the wrong chapter. <clears throat> As a private conversation, I'd like to have a flashback to me and Korod real quick. Go for it. Set it up. Okay. Where does where does this flashback happen? When what is what is that? And what does the the scene look like around you? All right, so we're going to end up being in the office, but it's after Kib has wandered off to do something, and we just haven't quite left yet. All right, hey, Rod. Yeah. Before you leave, shut that door. I mean, shut yourself in with me, but shut the door. I'll close the door. Okay, so I realized that the Yisekai has been incredibly helpful. But are we going to pay him a full share, or are we going to pay him like he's an actual member of a crew? I think it's In fact, the correct. same goes for... Okay, the same goes for Lenovo... Or, 
Kel- Kelovian and Nimbus. They're going to get paid as crew anyway. But, so you think we should? I'm okay with that too. Uh, we'll see how, and, how much better he gets. Right? I mean, yeah, if he earns better pay, he earns better pay. I'm fine with paying someone for what they're worth. But at the moment, if he was any happier, we would have thrown him in the corpse recycler alive. Hmm. That brings a smile to his face. Right. Other than that, at some point, we need a big strapping something to be some muscle for us. Because between the three of us, we're really only one fighter. That is true. Nice half giant something. Whenever we have time, we should look for something like that. Maybe we can get someone to desert from another ship. We'll pay you more and we'll give you your own room. But other than that, between the lightning kobolds and the others, we're eventually going to just have them... We we should get the equipment for them to be able to box it out and then send out waves for people to watch. Yes. Try to make a buck off that, too. And then, of course, if we do make any money off of that, we'll still get to fix them and they'll pay for that, too. Ha 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 ha. It's always a win-win, isn't it? Right. And the bonus here, of course, is, is there's not someone to yell at us every time we get caught with our hands in the cookie jar, so to speak. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you here in this room by yourself. <laughs> uh, really? With the cameras turned off, because you turn off the cameras when I leave. Uh, and I'll let you do your thing, because we'd forgotten all about that for a really long time. And goodbye. I'm going to go see what Kib's doing. Thum, 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 thum. Wait a minute. Ha! Get out of there. All right. See you later. Click. <laughs> Great. I'm stuck in the office. You're not stuck in the office. But this would be a perfect time for you to try to do, like, an engineering check if you knew that there were hidden things in this room. Uh, I don't know about those things. I had engineering trained. <laughs> uh, well, then this might be time for you to call, kid. I mean, Kib saw it, too. He was the one that almost let the cat out of the bag. I was just too dumb to notice. Mm-hmm. Kib, are you there? What? Sorry. What was he doing? Well, you were probably working on the ship somewhere, and then you get a call in your pocket. What's that? Oh, bum, bum, bum. Dude? Dude? Who the heck called me? Oh, hi. What's up? Come to the office. Okay. All right, I'll be there. Okay. And he hangs up and starts running towards the office. Don't forget to take the Yusekai tunnels. It'll take half the time off. Well, so long as we're not in battle, it will. You know, I'll probably use those normally because I'm like, I've built half these, so. Every once in a while now, you come across the node. <laughs> well, you make it to the office, and Kurad is in the office. Phillip is not around. Uh, she seems to have taken life. Have you had a chance to search this room yet for anything? No, but I could if you want me to. I mean, I, I'm not really sure what. Oh, that one thing. Oh, we could find it. Oh, what one thing? 
I remember pirate dude kept it. It was useful. Let's find it. Well, wow. You know exactly where it is. You both passed your perception check, so you know where it is. Phillip's the only one who didn't know it was here. Yeah. Phillip was like, nope, I don't see that lock right there. See that thing over there? Yes. Make sure it's not trapped or anything. Right. Okay. How do I do that? <laughs> Perception check. Nice. Nice. You actually do spot trap. I forgot to write down the CR of this thing. 45. No, it is not a CR 45 anything. Oh, uh, didn't he make it anyway? No. CR 45, the nuke goes off. <laughs> Okay. Make new characters. What is that? That's... Okay, if that's the case, I vote for kobolds with breath, we breath weapons. That would be cool. You actually managed to... We'll see what this is described here. So you are fiddling, you're looking around at it, Kib, and you realize that there is a mechanism with a not with a very small nozzle on the lock. And looking at it, you realize that if you had tried to open that without disarming that first. It would have fired. It would have. It was going to spray some kind of. Uh, it was probably going to spray some kind of spores at you or something. A oh, spore. Crafty that, little, crafty little person put little spore thing here to spray at us. <laughs> but it's right there, and we move that over there, and so then we give can me, open it. So give me an engineering check to see if you can disable it. Uh, Ask if you can take 10 or 20. You cannot. Oh, okay. Scott, don't take 10 or 20. Or, um, or uh, because there is a mystical element to it, uh, your mystic could also make a mysticism check. It's the same DC either way, so. Yeah! It's a matter of either, like either it's a matter of either you cut off the 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 spray nozzle, the vent the venting system, or uh, or uh, Krurad can neutralizes the spores. Which direction you want to when they're released? Which way do you want to go with it? I'm gonna be like, well, if we move that, I think like that. It should stop it, and then we can open it. I think, hopefully. Paris, Maybe. Let me do this, and I'll neutralize the spores. All right, go ahead and uh, mysticism check. A second time. You are. Oof. Oh, okay. So, is one of you helping the other one? Like, are you doing this as a thing where you guys are, are helping each other or correct? Or are you just like stepping in and take and like being like, nope, get out of my way? Yeah, basically, nope, get out of my way. Okay. So you like you, you, because I need to know what order things happen in. Um, you actually like, Kib, you see that Kib was about to, uh, was about to, you're, you're pretty sure Kib was about to set the whole, it was about to set the thing off and you step in and you neutralize the spores as they spray up. You know, manage to get neutralized the spores. Um, now you just need to get through the lock. Kib, that's you, buddy. 
That could be an engineering or a computer's check. Well, that could have worked better. But all right, let's unlock it. Let's try to unlock it. All right, give me an engineering check. Yeah, yeah you managed to get it unlocked. Open it up. Um, you look inside. There is, you know, there's like a, uh, uh, like there's a couple of like, uh, there's like a laser pistol in there, like a just a basic laser pistol, uh, like level one azimuth laser pistol. But there's also a data slate in there. Um, you guys want to, uh, the you guys want to try to do you want to turn it on or try to crack into it? Hey, we got some data. Hey, no, let me see that. Here you go. Researching really no, kind of cool information. Definitely. Do either of you have computers? Yes, I do. Good. Yeah. So give me the computer's roll. This is like it turns on, but it's you know locked. Wah, wah, wah. No. Hmm. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I'm scratching my. I'm scratching my head. Hey, look at that help row that that Karad gave Kib. Awesome. (laughs) Look, you're supposed to push this button and slide this lever. That's how you gain access to that. What were see like this? Yeah. So you managed to just uh, get a look. You managed to see, like, you managed to see what's on, like, uh, the the data disk, ha- or that the uh, this data slot has a nodule with one data node in it. See, it's small. There's one little node. See, so you go in here and then you pull it out. You didn't <laughs> go access to that. Give me a computer's role to see to get access to the nodule to the. Yeah. Uh, after nodule. after this, I want to go to the new stuff though. Okay. This is. Well, no, I meant the new kind of hacking. Oh. Um. All right. So, Kib, you managed to pull up the list. Uh, you managed to pull the data out. It's a list. In fact. It's a list of blackmail assets. You don't recognize any of the names. Um, did you know that this data, that this uh, list existed beforehand? Is this like, is this one of those moments where like, oh yeah, I remember when the captain got this, or is this a, or did you not know about this at all? I think you would know. Yeah. To so, be honest, because you'd be like, oh. That's probably really put that in there. Yeah, that's probably why he didn't shoot you when you got lippy with him, right? He's like, he's like, this is the one guy on the station who knows that I have this blackmail list. You know, I'm mad at him right now, and I got to punish him. And I, but I can't shoot him in the face because that he's the only one who knows that secret. You know, um, you know, that's maybe it's a thing like that, or it's like, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, you you see this, you. The names on here, none of them are anybody you know in particular, and there are some there are different names of different colonies, some of which you haven't even heard of, different like uh places. There's a a couple of names here and there throughout a, the uh the neighboring systems and whatnot. Um at this point, looking at this, you don't know how to get to half of these places or how half of these places are, but you probably know one or two people who might pay well for this kind of information. Like this thing would be massively useful. It's a lot of people. Well it's not like a lot a lot of people. It's you know it's a you know maybe a dozen people. Important people. I know I'm not there. And not of them, not all of them are important. You know, some of them have some money, but they're not necessarily important. Some of them are just, you know, some of them look like they're not really like 
because uh, there, there's a couple of notations. One or two of them have, you know, been sandbagging the debt for a while. And some, you know, he's got some notes about sending people to, you know, to on in on collection and whatnot. But he obviously never got the chance to do it before uh, the Grim Buckle Alliance came and took the place over for you. We do have some news. Excellent. Now well, we need yeah. to find people who find this information useful. Yeah. yeah. So you can, yeah, definitely. That's a you uh, put right down uh, blackmail list of blackmail assets, a data slate of of blackmail assets. And I don't know if you guys want to, one of you or the other is actually carrying it, or if you have it stashed hidden somewhere, <clears throat> or what the situation is. Um, we'll probably stash it back where we found it, minus the trap. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna lock it in there and 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 uh, leave it there. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Philip hasn't noticed it quite yet, so you know, and it's there. There you go. Uh, cool. So, and maybe we kind of come back to like from from that flashback about you know dealing with the the thing. Uh, both of you, by the way, Kib and I don't know if you saw it, Kib and Kurad, you both earned you know double yeah, what your awesome. check was in credits. So, um, in addition to whatever share you guys took out of the force you know, the 4,600, you know, that you guys got as a total. Yeah. Let's, let's so, flash to actually going back to that before I left for a moment. Yeah. So when we get to like the 4,600, that's when that part of the conversation happens. Yeah. Is it like, so, yeah. I had it. If we split it three ways, that was 1,533 a piece. So right now, let me do the math again. My new phone has stuff in weird places. So, if we split the 4,600 equally, that's 2,300 apiece. And then, let's separately pay him 100 apiece. That way, he thinks that he's got a one-up on us. We'll try to run a scam on him, thinking that he's getting double paid and not saying nothing about it. Well, at least that's what I'd do if I got double paid. I don't know. He is kind of honest. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And other than that, I will pay Colovian and Nimbus because it's my fault they're here anyway. I mean, not that Colovian is bad or anything, but Nimbus is kind of a pain in our ass. Well, but he is a loyal you, pain in the ass. If you want so to pay those, much... does it say? He's asking. Go ahead. No, how much again? Just a hundred. Oh, Oh, twenty three hundred for each of us, and then that'll drop to twenty two hundred because we each pay. Well, we'll do that in character. Um. Whew, sorry. Uh. Okay, and what were you trying to say, Jester? I'm sorry. Oh, I lost it. Um. Okay, were you trying to tell me I don't need to pay Nimbus and Colovian? Yeah, I was about to say that you guys can pay them individually extra if you want to, but it it's assumed that because they're part of your organization that the organization pays them. All right, fine. Then we'll just each pay him a hundred a hundred credits at the moment. Say, and if, you, if he asks for something, I'll probably be down to play for something too. But you know, I mean, if you if if you want to pay them extra, that's fine. But it you know you mechanically don't have to because narratively they're getting paid anyway. They're like the trade money is not coming just to you. There there is an assumption well, that. The extra is coming to you. There's still money that's being spent on paying all of your people, paying that, for that, like the, the logistical that's, side. 
That's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and do it at least for a while because okay. All right. uh, they are people that I actually know that are stuck here because we all got caught together. So, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm only going to write down 2,000, and then let's flash to the present where I'm like, hey, Kib, that reminds me. It's been about a month, right? Yeah, give or take. Well, you've been pretty good crew. Um, here's a hundred credits, man. All right. And if there's anything you need help buying, if we need it, I'll throw down to try and help get you something. He has been helpful, hasn't he? Oh, whatever. Here, here's a hundred. Sweet. I got 200. Thanks. (laughs) Happy little Yusukai. Happy little Yusukai. Severely underpaid, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Technically, according to the core book, he's getting paid pretty well. Well, wait, is that a week? And he's not getting paid that well, but at least it's something. <laughs> I'm getting paid better than what the previous occupants were getting. That's true. What, what were the... Paid. I was going to say, what were the pirates paid actually paying you? Probably like a couple of gold every couple of weeks, because they were starting to run low on supplies and stuff. Yeah. So they had already heard everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Trade goods, foods and services, professional services. What is your total ranks in engineering? Just three. It's only third level, so yeah. <laughs> okay. So three times two is six. Six times thirty is one hundred and eighty. Technically, he did get paid better than he would have. Oh well, there you go. Uh... <clears throat> Plus whatever he made from his profession check earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, and. We may not pay you every month on time, but you will eventually get paid when we get paid. Right. As long as we got money to fix things, and then I'll fix it with what we got. Eventually, so there will be enough money for us to fix things right. For yeah. now, if we're lucky, maybe we'll be able to find a ship that's di- everybody died of some horrible disease, and we can just use it for parts. Um, hmm. That so, could be arranged. Have we found Captain... I'm Cracks? angry. Captain yeah. Cracks? Captain Cracks. No, he, he seems to be still on his ship. Oh. It, yeah. It's not like... I mean, they're docked. It's not like you can't go to the docking and... And, and, uh, and knock? Yeah, go visit him on his ship or what have you. But he's, you want me to go get him? I can go say hi to him. I'm pretty good yeah. at Talking to people. Actually, I think it would be great if you went instead of me. Sweet. <laughs> so what am I telling him? That you want to see him? Okay. Later. I'll go get him. Yeah, tell him we have need of his services. Okay. All right. I'll do that. And I'll make my way down there through my little tunnels. Dig a tunnel. Dig, dig a tunnel. Right. Yeah, you you make your way to the docking, you know, to the dock where they're they're docked at, because your your do- your ship it, shuttle is docked on the other one. But yeah, um, I guess technically the 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 uh, plasma scar is not docked. They're just kind of there, close to dock, waiting to shuffle in to pick up their guy when they go to leave. But yeah, he's ah, Crex is a um. Yeah, you you get to the uh, you get to the um, to the uh, uh, docking door and whatnot, the airlock, and there's a uh, you know there it takes a minute before anyone answers, um, and then you're like, they're, they're like it, the camera looks up, looks around, then looks down. It's like it's like, hey, what do you want? Hey, so 
um, Philip needs something from you. So you need to go up to the office now because he wants to talk to you now. For Come on, me? Let's go. Yeah. Like there's the, the airlock opens and it's and and it's not Captain Crex. It's one of his no. guys. <laughs> like, you guys all sound the same. I, I need Cap, the Captain Crex. Oh. oh, okay. Lord. He's like, oh, I think the captain is. A, I think the captain is breaking up a fight, or maybe he's in a fight. I don't know. I think it has something new with a fight. <laughs> and he goes, like he turns around and he grabs his inner. He grabs his like comm unit out of his pocket. He reaches around for a minute, digs, he looks at it, drops it, picks it back up, curses at himself, looks at it and goes, Man, the screen's not cracked anyway. At least not any more than it was. And he like turns it then he like punches in the nut, you know, punches in the thing and and like holds it up in front of his face and he's like and he's like and, and he and he practically yells at it. He's like he's like, Captain! 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 And eventually cracks is like, he comes over, he's like, what? 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 What do you want? What do you want? Mm. Like, the, the the station commander wants to see you. He's like, you're like, uh, and Krex is like, and he's like, why? What for? What for? <sighs> and he kind of looks at you and he's like, what for? <laughs> we want to find people. Specific people. They want to find think you people. might know where these people are. Um, uh, and they think you might know where these people are. <laughs> yeah. And and the and like Craig's kind of sizing goes, I can hear the other guy. You're on speaker, dumbass. <laughs> he, he's like, oh. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's like, so you're coming up? And he's like, yes, I'm coming. He's like, me, he's like, uh, Russell, Russell, he's the you can hear him like sort of cursing in the background. You hear him like some, some kind of crashing, and you hear him yell again. You're not sure what the crashing was or what he's what or who he's yelling at. But it well, takes he seems like, like a pleasant person. You, you fine. well, you hear apparently he it's it's almost like he forgot to turn the calm off. Because you can hear the sounds around him muffled, and it sounds like he's moving, walking somewhere, because the sounds change and whatnot. It sounds like there's muffled voices of other kobolds talking to him, but you can't make out what they're saying. And he's talking back, you can't make out what he's saying. And, in, like, it, t- it, it, like, at some point, there's, like, you can't tell exactly. It doesn't seem like he's too far from the airlock when he realizes this is going on. Because maybe he hears something in the background from his his crewmate, and he picks up his go, "Hey, what? Wait a minute! How long has this been like that? Oh, damn it! Pocket dial." And he just fucking tur- and he turns it off, and a couple and like a few seconds later, he comes out the airlock. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, find people. Who find? What do you want to find? What are we finding? Why are we finding them?" Are we going to feed him into the corpse recycler? Is that what we're doing? Is that what the thing is? They want somebody to put in the corpse recycler? Well, maybe if they don't give us the supplies to make medicine or drugs or something. I don't know. I volunteer I volunteer Captain Tawi and her crew. You can put them in the corpse recycler. <laughs> he's, like, hey, hey, he's like, anything else? Why can't my brain remember the name of that dude? The crew. Oh, come on. Um, think, think. Like he puts his finger to his head. Like, man, what was the name of that group? They do drugs and poisons and stuff. Crap! Why can't I think of their name? Ugh, I, drugs and poisons and stuff. I could be a number of people. He goes. He goes. So they're looking to buy drugs and poisons? Oh, I can probably help with that. He's like, lead well, the way! <laughs> okay, let's go to the office. They'll hey. explain better. I'm good. I'm not very good at talking. Yeah, That's right. Hey! Yeah, he's a, he, he follows you. Um, uh, Philip eventually, like, are you, are you guys, uh, did you, 
uh, yeah, so he follows it. Captain Krex uh, finally arrives in. He's like, he's like, what do you want? He's like, are you trying to find drugs? Hey, you're looking to find some drugs? I can probably steal you some drugs. I mean, find some drugs to sell you. I mean, you know. Well, either way, I mean, what do you care what, how I get them? I can, I can get you some drugs. <laughs> Hmm. Hello? I'm sorry. I still thought you were talking to the kid. So you've made it uh, back to me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, we're, we're, and that was, I can get you some drugs? Yeah. All right, was, and you said they're the red what? Booters. Where, do you know about the red booters? Their yeah. captain? He's like the red booters. <laughs> he spits on the ground. And he goes, he goes, yeah, fuck the red booters. Half-assed outfit anyway. Besides, last things we got from them, totally bunk. When we find them, I, I, I change my, uh, I change my vote. He turns around, looks at Kib, and he goes, I change my vote for who you can feed into the corpse recycler. You can put the red booters in there. I mean, you could probably still put Captain Tawi and her crew in there. I won't complain, but you know, the red booters first. <laughs> okay, Captain. Do you have any idea where they like to hang out? Do they have a home base that you know of? Uh, are they hiding on one of the moons? Yeah, I don't know where their home base is, but I know what their shuttle looks like. I could give you all the details on their shuttle, its transponder codes, and things like that. Because uh, how much is it worth to you? So this is where we have to try and hustle each other. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, mm. he, he's I'll like, in the bustle. he's like, he's like, look, I'll even sell you the information cheap because I likes you so much. What's cheap nowadays? Yeah, well, for the red booters, a lot of people would love to know where they're at and get some information on them. Everybody wants them dead anyway. I mean, enough that they'd like to do it themselves. But here's the, uh, he's like, normally I'd sell this kind of information for, you know, two, three hundred credits and what have you. But I'll let it go for a hundred. Done. Yeah. I yeah. hand him a hundred credits on a credit stick. Yeah. He, and erase a hundred credits from my sheet. He says... He says, so what you're looking at is for one of them Ringworks Wanderers. It's, uh, and, uh, it, actually, you know what? I don't think it was a Ringworks Wanderer. Let me look at that. Let me double check. He says, you're looking for, let me double check the name of this ship before, if I, the name of the ship classification before I screw it up and say the wrong thing. Mm. But he's got, like, um, some stats on it here, or he's got yeah. like kind of like a, a rundown. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. maybe, it, maybe it is. See, the oh, main problem. Okay. I, the main problem I have with this information right now, Korod and Kib, is we don't have a ship with weapons. The shuttle so taking the missile system. I thought there was no weapons on the shuttle. I don't remember seeing them. Come, show them to me now. Questions on the shuttle. Why would I make a shuttle without weapons? Because I didn't think we had enough points for weapons. It has a torpedo launcher. Oh, okay. Then we have all the weapons in the world. But wait, we don't have shields? Is that what it was? Yes, that's what it was. Okay. And if I didn't put the weapon on, it's still not enough points to give it even, like, shield yeah, you're like, spit through. Yeah. Why do we have three points of shields? It's, it's worthless. Yeah, I understand all that, dear friend. But that means if we take a hit, yeah. we're pretty we much screwed. Hit. Yeah, it's a, a, ring, a Ringworks Wanderer. It's like, they're one of them Ringworks Wanderers. It's a uh, you know, pretty standard build. If they 
they they've been pretty clever about where they uh, about how they get in and out. Hmm. But they near as we can tell, yeah, they they sell in some of these colonies and stuff. Got to be a way that they're getting through that they're getting down there. Could be that they're using that combination of elements and stuff that they have on those on the planet to hide their signature and whatnot. But I figure if you ca- if you can catch them and uh, on their way to the planet, assuming that they're not based there, which I'm guessing, considering they're using a starship to get in and out, then uh, you're probably you might catch them coming in and out of uh, that first planet. You mean the forest planet? Yeah, yeah, that one. Mm. Now, would you like to join us in the destruction of these guys? This is... uh, He's like, normally, I'd say yeah. But, unfortunately, when my guy is... Once my guy is healed up, we we got a commitment on the other side. And the Count and the Count is a Velquin. Uh, well, we get they turned us on to some juicy information about a one of their rivals in a lightly guarded transport ship, hauling some decent I cargo. I see. Okay. Well, Probably thanks for the information. <laughs> thanks for the information. We will have to seek help from others. Then I guess. Was- but remember, Captain Crex, you and your kobolds are welcome here. He he's like, he's like, we are. Uh, he goes, and we're happy to use the place as a station as long as we're, you know, as long as we don't. He, he goes, but we are going to have to talk about that Captain Tawi at some point. He 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 said, I, and, and uh, he kind of uh, he's like. And he says, you know those gnolls? They like to eat sentient peoples. He goes, hey, and he, and he, and he kind of shrugs it, and he shrugs his shoulders. He's like, hey, he's oh, like. Gosh. What are they called? Cannibals? No, the camel people. The dromedae? Yeah, well, I've had dromedae myself. It is a delicacy. He looks at you, and he kind of chuckles, and he goes, I don't know if you're telling if you're joking or if you're telling the truth, and I don't really give a shit. <laughs> All right. Either way, I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. He's. Uh, All right. As soon as he makes it back onto his ship, I uh, send a wave to Captain Tawi. Uh, Tawi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Captain Tawi, because she's still here too, right? Yeah. You know, she, like, yeah. she answers. She's like. Um, uh, uh, she answers the the comms like herself. She's like, she seems to be like, and you're guessing that the, the way they like whatever their rotation cycle is, this is probably like their version of night shift because she seems to be on the bridge by herself with her feet kicked up and some sort of like coffee in a mug, just kind uh-huh. of like hey, hanging out. And she's like. Uh, it seems like it's a bit quiet for once. She's like, she's like, she's like, oh, what you look at? What you want there, Miss Defoe? So oh, we've come into some information about the red. Oh, you know they make shitty drugs and steal from the wrong people, and everybody hates them. The red somebody's. The red booters? I don't see how you're having okay. such a hard how you have such a hard time remembering that. It's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. But either way, so from what we've gathered while we've been here, they're not very good at what they do, and we have the means, but not the materials, to uh, do better than them and supply a better product for the same price, if not cheaper. Um, but we're one tiny shuttle that doesn't even have shields, and I was looking for some muscle to uh, help with this mission. She's like, she's like, that would depend on what you're willing to pay. There's some pretty juicy scores out there that I was, uh, that I've uh, learned about. Your, uh, your little soiree was quite informative, if you were 
listening quite in. He's like, she's like, and, and she says, uh, like, aware that our workforce meeting worked out fairly well for everyone involved, yes. I was like, but the question remains, what exactly would you be paying for these services? Well, what we're looking for is materials to make a better grade of drug as well as any of the equipment that they have that would make it easier for us. So that means the ship would be completely completely yours if we took it. And if there's any money involved, you could take 20% of the final. How's that sound? Oh, wait. Damn it. I wish I could take 20. Yay! Let's see. What is the DC? Them. Huh? You did change your attitude to friendly, but friendly isn't quite helpful. But that does make, but she does like you a little bit better. All right, I'm willing to negotiate, dear. She's like, look, I like you. And what's your but what's your ship got? It's no shields. What kind of weapons? We have a uh, light missile launcher. It's a launcher. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't come with much. Like I said, my grandfather, who provided me with this station, did not feel the need to upgrade me from anything past, you know, basic. Uh, I think she's she's gonna cor- uh, counter offer here, but I want to look at something here real quick. I think. Take your time, Jessa. She's a. I want to look at. Do, do, do. She's like. Oh, let me see. She's like. You know, they don't have much in the way of shields themselves. You're a. Uh, Likely, she says, from what it sounds like, you're not at that much of a disadvantage against the Red Booters uh, shuttle. If you're going after their va- their shuttle Vaporous, they've run from us before. We got a little got there a little late, a little late. I could run this. I could run distraction for you for the ship, but without the extra twenty percent on the money. But that's only if you really don't feel secure about doing it yourself, because I'm not going to lie, you know, and you're looking at the specs of the ship, like you, they don't have much in the way that their ship is lightly shielded. This is, they, does your, are your missile launchers mounted on a, uh, are your missile launchers mounted on a turret? Karad. No, they're only forward firing. Hey, well, then you won't have the advantage of that, but their missiles are... Their uh, missiles. Their guns are only front, forward firing anyway. I believe... What are their guns again? Uh, you are looking at... I think they just have light laser cannons. No, they do have a turret. No, that's a yeah. cavalry invention. No, that's a, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. That's a Cavalry Venture. They okay. have forward light laser cannons is all they have. So that means it'll be a bunch of us spinning in circles. All right, remind me of the counter offer one more time. I was in the middle of my coughing fit. Things. The counter the weapon. My counter offer is this. I can run distraction and get their attention for you. Give them your free sh- give you a free shot to open up. I.e. if you ever gone hunting 
Ms. Defoe. Yes, just recently. It almost killed me. Well, there's a tactic called flushing them out. It's simple. I use my own ship to flush them out in your direction, and you do, and you ambush them. You just figure out the where and when you need it to happen, and for the cost of the distraction, I'll take the ship, you get their supplies, whatever equipment they've got. No further money need exchanged at that point. That sounds like a great deal. I wish we were in person so we could properly shake hands to square this. She's like, you tell, you, he says, but you've got a small enough window. You've got a fairly small window if you need me help, though. I do have... Right. You have got jobs to do, too, from our workforce. Yes. He's just like... Hmm. Okay, so, because I haven't asked you yet, do you actually know where they like to hang out in the system? Is there a spot that they tend to attack from more often than others? Uh, if I could have found... If I knew where they were based at, if I would have wiped them out a long time ago myself... I think they're the only. I think they might be the only people that I hate more than the Lightning Dragons crew. And she's like, uh, "They're. Uh, I know they do a lot of selling on that first planet. There's a few other colonies here and there, but uh, that they might that they might do some selling in and what have you. But as far as it goes." Is I only know where a few of them are. Most of them don't exactly like to welcome the likes of my kind. For um, reasons I just kind of comprehend. And she's kind of like, uh, it gives you like a, a sardonic smile and kind of like raises her coffee cup like, uh, like you know what I'm talking about. Very well. We will try to... Uh... Figure out where these guys can be caught up at real quick, and I'll get back with you shortly. All right. Let's say tomorrow. Well, I'm still waiting on I'm still waiting on me me resident Noel, the dog face, lying in your bed in your infirmary right now. So, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Ba-doop. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Karad, yeah. you actually get a message. Oh. Um, you get a message from Granin of Himwell. Uh, you get a message from him. Uh, it's it like encoded to you, like uh, maybe like somebody on the on the bridge, like uh, gives you the notification, like you have a message. Or, Doctor, you have a message. <laughs> Okay, I'll send it to my comms. All right, and it's Granin, and he's got a, you know, a, a wide smile on his face, and he is like, "Well, he goes, I hope, I hope our meager beginnings in trade are finding you well and helping you get on your feet. Things are going, uh, things are going relatively okay here on the in Granin. There's uh, still a little bit of tension and." Between the 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 isolationists and uh, the rest of us, but it's a uh, it's a work in progress. I'd like to give you a pers extend a personal invitation for you to visit the colony here in Himwell. I'm uh, enclosing the coordinates that you can find Himwell at. I'd love it if you came down and take a tour. And anyway, um. There's a, I've also attached a list of uh, a list of logistical data of you know shipments and and trade you know vessels that you can expect to on arrival uh, to your station back and forth. Um, anyway, I really hope you can make it down. We're uh, we're about to uh, we're about to have a uh, founding day festival down here, and we're you know. Figure you might like to know who you're in business with. Anyway, be well, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon. 
Aw, you made a friend. I did make a friend. Yeah. Hmm. And he gave me the date of this festival. Yeah, yeah. He he enclosed all the information. Okay, so I sent a message back. Yeah. Very nice of you to respond back. Yes, it's helping. I would be delighted to show up at the Founders Festival. Should I bring some of my comrades along with me? Hope to hear back. All right, cool. Yeah, it's short and sweet. Cool. Hold on. Um. Yeah, you guys. So you guys have a few hours to kill at this point while you're um while you're actually, talking. Actually, Korod. Yeah. Since we've come into some money, I have some stuff for you to do. Oh. What is that? So, I've been thinking about some race moat eyes. After all, we should at least have a little bit of stuff to, like, show the customers. There's some MK1s. We're not able to make the twos yet. And I figured since I was already going to be under the knife, so to speak, we could get a breath weapon, too. I think an acid one will be fun. Should be interesting. But it'll take a couple hours. Yeah, that's the other thing. You guys have a little money in your pockets. If there's stuff that you can, you want to buy, anything... You can uh, you can buy anything your level or lower. You can only or at, if you can buy items that are one level higher at a fifty percent markup. Ooh, fifty. Yeah, technology shit's hard to get out here because the packed worlds doesn't exactly can't exactly ship in quantity out here, and the Velquin Empire and the Girin Empire don't seem all that interested in enriching the lives of anybody that's not part of their empires. Mm-hmm. Okay. Remember, I trust you. Hmm? Oh, I was still talking to Korod. Uh, I was just getting under, you know. Oh... You know, it makes it so you don't feel stuff. I'm becoming anesthetized as we speak. Ah, yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. He, like, so you're 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 going under the knife to get the race mode eyes it's and the dragon knife. gland and the dragon gland. Sweet. Yeah. Acid. Level two. Copycat. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So are you are I you like trying to say? Okay, I was going to say, are you trying to say you already have a dragon gland that's acid? Yes, I do. <clears throat> that almost makes me want to get a different one, but I've already said acid, so I'm going to stick with it. Oh no, we all should have a dragon gland that spits acid. Oh, is that true, Kib? Do you have a dragon gland that spits acid? If a pouch or store things in, does that count? Does it spit acid? No. Okay, then no, it doesn't. But it'll be okay. I can put some acid in it, and then like I don't know how I'm gonna spit that out. I might actually burn my teeth in the process. So maybe yeah, that's that would be a grand idea. Well, you could try. No, I can store it in there. No, that wouldn't work. No, nope, we can't do it. Okay, fine. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. 
Do you and there's another there's there's a couple a couple of questions I want to ask here. First of all, do you guys have like are you guys taking charge of specific departments yourselves or do you are you um like are you assigning people to do that? Well, I mean, you what have departments? Several... I'd want to you only have two control of, like there's a bunch of followers. Yeah. Say so it one you... more time, Jessa. It's like you do. You, I mean, you only have two like actual employees, but a bunch of followers that effectively work for you. So, I mean, well, and I assume that the schedule has been fairly set before we even got here with those guys. Right. And so long well, as they're doing what needs done, then I don't have a problem well, with their schedule. Well, there's like you, there's a difference between the grim buckle people and yours, right? Like your people are probably involved in like running the station and stuff and whatnot. But since there's not enough of them to meet the minimum, the the grim buckle are there too. I just wondered if like you had like divvied up who's do who's keeping track of what. I mean, obviously Kurt is probably going to be keeping track of all the medical stuff and and whatnot. Um, right. I didn't know if you had like. NPC underlings that you had doing things like organizing the doc schedules or, you know, or, you know, dealing with the inventory, um, you know, processes or, you know, stuff like that. If you had like assigned any of that or if that was something that was on your docket mm. or what have Belovian's in charge of inventory. All right. All right. Because, yeah, she's a smart chick. Um. Other than that, so far we've been getting away with letting underlings do it. Okay. And I realize that's not necessarily the best way to do it, but I can't think of anyone else. I mean, we could be like, so listen to Nimbus if he tells you to do stuff, unless it sounds too stupid. Right. Right. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's probably a good rule of thumb. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's just annoying. Yeah, he's just kind of dumb and annoying. That's all. Yeah. So, um, although I think at some point you do get uh an, a visit, like what uh, in the uh, visit from uh, Crenville, like I don't know, you know who's in the office or you know, or count or uh, conference room, whichever, when he uh, comes to catch up with you. Let's say, honestly, the conference room is nice, but if there aren't enough chairs, the office is almost better. All right. Yeah. So right. office. Right. The it's office where I'll be. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, so I think maybe like Crenville pokes his head in at some point, and obviously he's not always on duty necessarily, but I mean, he's got a room and time off like anybody. But he, mm -hmm. he does make his, he does kind of like knock on the door and kind of poke his head in. And he's like, you, uh, you busy? Not necessarily. What's up? And he kind of it comes in, sits down, he comes in, he's, and he's like, so, um, got to send a report back to my brother on how things are going out here. So, uh, how are things going out here? Blow. Blow? Blow? Yeah, I'll do some blow. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Oh, slow. I'm slow. sorry. Yeah. yeah, things are slow. We have yeah. made a couple of connections, and I rattled them off. Right. Uh... Other than that, we are currently trying to gain access to materials and strengthen our bonds with two separate entities that don't like each other. And it's like, <coughs> he goes, yep, well, it sounds like you're, uh, sounds like you're hard at work then. He goes, um, I'll be sure to put that in my report. And it's like, uh, uh, and he, he kind of looks around and he's like, yeah, everything else been going all right? The, uh, he goes, uh, the, any issues with the, uh, with grit, with, uh, our people? No, your people are fantastic. Good. I'm hoping to keep it that way. Oh, mm -hmm. um, 
<laughs> he goes, if you, uh, one more thing, if you hear, uh, God, if you get a, eh, more of a personal issue here, if you, uh, get any communications from a, uh, from a tiefling named Sestra, you let me know as soon as you hear any, you hear her name. It's Sestra, a female tiefling. Okay. Yeah. He goes, um, he, he goes, I just kind of like to know if she shows up in this area. Yeah. Just. Owes you money? Uh, personal issues. Plus, it's complicated. Normally is. Hopefully you don't have to, hopefully we don't have to, you know, deal with that. But, uh, if we do, you're probably better served. No, you're better. I'll explain a few things. Uh, there's a few things that I'd probably ought to tell you if you do end up having to deal with her at all. And he goes, he's like, but, um, yeah. And you know, personal business, but, well, uh, just, uh, you know, outside of that, I don't think I really know anything else. I'll, uh, leave oh, you wait. to it. Huh? You've been to this quadrant before, right? Eh, briefly, a couple times. I don't really, right. I don't really spend a lot of time out here. Well, okay. So, do you know anything about where the Red Booters hang out? <laughs> nah, I only heard about them recently. If what I understand, they're not well liked around here and kind of small time. I'm surprised. Yeah. The, I'm surprised no one's knocked them off yet. Well, what, that what was. Tell me. That is exactly why I was trying to ask you for information. We are currently working on something like that. Well, well, yeah. If you're, uh, he says, he says that'll, uh, he says, now that's something. That's the kind of thing that my, that's the kind of detail that my brother would would absolutely enjoy reading about in the report. And this uh, is kind of this is his kind of reading material. Hmm. He's like, he's like, uh, you, uh, you take them out. You're gonna have to give me as many details as you can. I'm sure my brother would love to know how you manage the, how you, how you manage on it. Hmm. Hopefully, we do well. It will be uh, both a message of happy news and. Perhaps let them know that we're serious in this quadrant. That's definitely the kind of thing that'll make a statement. I mean, you come in and take out somebody who's been established, even if they're small time, you make the statement that you're here and you'll eat up whatever competition there is. And, well, that'll certainly get you noticed by both the right and the wrong people. It's the smart move. I like it. Yeah. I see go like it even more. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Did we ever hear back from our uh, happy captain? It'll probably take a couple of days to get a response from him. He's, okay. It, yeah, he's it, busy. It, there's a reason that he's well liked. It's because he's always busy doing some bullshit. <laughs> but you, you will get a response from him eventually. Okay, so, I was just making sure. Yeah. Because it like he like like he starts off friendly and he you haven't given him a reason not to be so, um, but yeah he'll he'll probably get back to you uh, as soon as he can. I got to figure out how many days out he is, uh, figure right. the travel and stuff. So, but yeah, um, who else do we have on our list that might have information? Our night guys aren't around anymore. Most everyone that we're going to attempt to call at this point is going to be a couple days away. Right? Probably. I mean, yeah. Right so. now. I mean, you could attempt to try to ask some of the people that have taken up residence here, but they don't look like they probably know. Right. Most of them look like out-of-towners like us. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're people who are drifting from somewhere. Um, 
to somewhere else or just right. drifting in general <clears throat> except for the ones that have taken up residence who are just kind of like mm, we're hanging here for right now <laughs> um the mood on the station right now is uh pretty much a get to work attitude Every they're not necessarily happy, but they're not necessarily happy or not happy either. They're just kind of like going to business. Like mm. everything, it's even keel right now. The Grim Buckle people, doing, you know, they're fairly happy to, uh, or at least content to take or their orders from, you know, their boss, Kren. Then uh, your people well, are generally pretty happy to do, well, I mean, content to do their work too. Um, you know, I think probably Kalavian is is the one that's like uh, the busiest out of the people because you like she's obviously got a bit more responsibility. And she's probably the one that's like uh, um, like working longer hours than the rest of them. Yeah. Like Nimbus will work longer; it will work over if you ask him to. But for the most part, he he works out when he works out. <laughs> if I can, um, Kalavian will stay. Bit longer because she knows she's expecting responsibility. Right. All right. So, Karad. Yes. We got a couple of days. Let's do some downtime activity and gather information. Sounds good to me. Mm. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me see. Downtime activities. All right. So with that, I think you you find out that for being small time, they do have um, you know, they're they're more than just the ship uh, the crew of one ship. Like they only have like the vaporous, but they're like uh they only have the vaporous as far as a ship that that's making runs and stuff that anybody knows of. Nobody knows exactly where their base of operations is, but there are, you know, a couple of people that are like that you know that are like oh you're gonna start you know you're gonna start a war with the red booters hey you know uh nobody seems to be really uh, uh terribly worried about the about the you know the red booters possibly going extinct if anything they're more uh curious about like uh how you're going to how you're gonna like stack up against them it's one of those where it's like okay okay Oh, this is a fight I want to see. Who's going to come out on top? You know, it's kind of the attitude you get from most people. Justin. Yeah. Locate galactic destination. It's page 34. Uh, page 34 of the Galaxy Exploration Manual. Page 34 of the Galaxy X. Hmm. Oh, God damn it. Oh, is this... Oh, that's interstellar species. There it is. Page 34, you say? Yeah. Okay, galactic destination. Finding hints of the existence of an unexplored system or some other unknown destination in the galaxy. Like, we can search for uh, fuel trails and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
And because we have stats on the ship, we know what kind of fuel they're using. Hold on. You spend a day cross crunch for its database to find more information the destination for which you're searching. Jump to piloting search. Mm. Up by five, depending on. You see, he starts at 20. Yeah, but this is like, uh, this is for finding a position of a system, not a specific ship or base. Thought maybe we could just use it to like gain clues. Not necessarily like, well, there's 63 vapor trails right now, and none of them are the fuel that you're looking for. But, all right, I thought I'd try. Um, seeing if they have anything that provisionally says anything about uh, locating ships. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like it. It's, yeah, it's existence of unexplored system or some other unknown destination in the galaxy. Spend the data to da, da, da. My success clue to the location of the system. Yeah. What about map star system? We can spend part of the day to, or a day or two doing that. Map star system. Page 35. 35. Sensor drone search. Oh, wait. In the day, started exploring SWAS, making numerous sensor sweeps to search for signs of large gravity wells at the end of the load. They attempt a computer's check. It's, uh, they should have done that at the party. Medium range. Do you have at least short range sensors? No, I think we're budget. Yeah, okay, yeah, so... Yeah, so... It, okay, cut rate scanners have a DC of 30 or higher. And they may not be re or may not be reusable for the activity. Ooh. That's soft. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a DC of 30. You can try and do that. I mean, at the most, we could get a plus one, two to that. And I don't have that many ranks. Yeah. Yeah, so it's effectively your sensors can't aren't that fine tuned or that good. Um, I mean, you do know where they sell to. Okay, well and, then uh, we should probably go there and try to make some diplomacy checks with those people. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, it's doubtful. Or see if they're there. Yeah, as you say. Um. And Kurad, you uh, you have the invitation uh, to uh, yeah. to to join them for their festival. So he's uh for and whatnot. So you guys have an excuse. You can go there that you can go to him. Well, um, well, then we're waiting for the uh, the message from his friend to see if he can bring extras. Yeah. Um. I mean, the, there's probably an extra. There's probably like a provision in there for you to bring, like your friend, to bring, you know, who uh, a couple of guests with you. I would imagine. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's probably something in there in that message because he knows it's not just you. He sent you the personal. He spent Kurad the personal invitation because you know, that's who his contact, his specific contact is. But he knows the other two of you exist, or at least that. You know, Kurad has partners, um, mm -hmm. so he would assume you'd bring somebody, you know, security contingent or a couple of bodyguards or your business partners or somebody. Oh, Jester, turn to page one hundred one. One hundred one. Galaxy Air Explorations yeah. Manual. Yeah. Delegate work is a thing now. 
Yes, it is. Hmm. I did not know that. Yes, I, I actually told you guys that. You can give you uh, before. It's one of the downtime activities you guys can do, and whatnot. Well, and it's there, but like there are other things to do most of the time. Otherwise, we always do that. And I was gonna say, you know, if one of you wants to, you know, spend the day assigning people to do other stuff while somebody does executive decisions or other downtime activities, that's absolutely okay. Um, you know. Right, you can't do a membership drive until your organization goes up a level, which is dependent upon you going up a level. Right, so, and yeah, the membership drive would be what we do all the time. Be like, yeah, come on, come on, come to our show. All right. So, what day is your uh, event if we can come? It's probably. Um, it's probably about a, a, a far enough out that he could that you would have been able to have the ability to uh, make it. And it's probably like he'd know to send you the send it to you like a week or two in advance, okay. um, but just to be just to be certain that you had time to get there because it could take up to you know six days, yeah, so, uh, to get there depending on the 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 you know your navigation or whatever. So, yeah, he definitely would, you know, he would. Um, so, he's. Mm. Which, uh. But, yeah, you guys. Um. I mean, and you probably eventually get, you know, you would probably eventually get like a. Um, let me see here. I need to roll a couple of things. Because I need to. Mm -hmm. So, I have a random question. I have what a random answer. was left in my old room before I was put in the break? Or did they ransack that whole thing? Um, it was empty. Pretty much whatever, pretty much whatever um, furniture you had is there. If you had any extra valuables in there, they might be gone. Unless it's something that's listed on your character sheet. Um, you could you you could theoretically say that there was some minor you know valuable items that were stolen, but I'm not going to steal any of your equipment. You, it is wrecked though. I mean, they fought their way through the station to get rid of the pirates, the pirates that were here before. So, yeah, I was looking for some of the blueprints on some of the things I worked on over the years. If they I think that they destroyed those or whatnot. You could probably find a few, a few of them. There's some that have obviously been damaged in like fires set by plasma fires and shit like that, and the taking of the station. There's some that are torn up and ripped up that got damaged in the fight from, you know, maybe falling off the table and somebody slipping on them or something. Um, you know, those kinds of the the kinds of like wear and tear you would expect if somebody had a firefight. Because it looks like somebody specifically had a firefight in your room. <laughs> You're not sure who the fuck ran to your room to try to hold out against an army of Grimbuckle uh, Syndicate, you know, thugs to fight it out in there. But whoever it is, they fucked up some of your shit and they didn't do a good job of it. In fact, when you got, in fact, when you got, well, the first time you went back to your room after getting out of the brig and, and settling back in, you had to drag a dead body out. Well, if he destroyed my room, well, that's, that's I hope you he remember did. to put that body inside the recycler. He was a halfling. Aww. That wouldn't be much. Yeah. He was a halfling. He... I would have asked, hey, I found a dead body in my room. What do you want me to do with it? It's a short guy. <laughs> I would have no. just asked. Um, yeah. I mean, if you guys told him to put him in the fucking deep freeze, then I suppose he probably would be, but... So, the corpse recycler allows the ship to render bodies into necrographs. It's a process that takes one archer out one hour, and a carcass fed into the recycler produces a number of necrograph UPVs equal to 10 times the CR of the creature. 
He so it's actually CR one. in that size. A level zero? Yeah. yeah, he well he was a level one. So Okay, so the first necrograph that you gave to whoever cost ten points less. Or okay. exactly ten point less. But either way, yeah, throw him in the recycler. Yeah, so um I mean it, the mortuary or the recycler. God. If you throw him in the recycler, you get the UPPs out now. If you throw him in the mortuary, he's on nice until you decide to use him. Well, I did just get two ne- well, a necrograph and a fucking regular graph, so I would have used him. All right, so then you pay the get ten real PP. The ten UPPs less than what you would have paid. All uh, right. Uh, yeah, so you're uh, definitely all. Um, you definitely are looking at. I think. I think after what was it? Like the day before, or it'll be. It'll be six days before you get before a message goes back gets the uh, gets back to the station. And by that time, if you guys were looking to make the festival, you would have, you would probably already be gone by that point. But it'd be there when you got back. Okay. Which, Kurat, are you going to talk to the rest of the group about going to this thing? Yeah, I fill everybody in about the this festival and you know what's on the planet we're looking for. You yeah, guys are all about we'll make parties, a couple more communi- connections. You guys are a lot more social than the last group I was with. I gotta say, that's pretty cool. Pirates aren't known for their parties. Well, except for that <laughs> we one. Had, we had parties, but they weren't. You're trying to make this Negotiating part, they were kind of negotiating. They're like, "Hey, do what we say, or we're gonna cut your head off." <laughs> like that whole blacklist thing you had to do with that. Blacklist? What blacklist? Oh, the one that was in the safe. You didn't know about that safe. one. Safe. The safe that's in the office. <laughs> What are you talking about, Kib? There's no safe in the office. Show me. Oh, yeah. Like, look. See, right here. Here's the safe. Oh, the pistol's still in there, too. And that data shard, too. That has a blacklist on it. It's kind of cool. Are you going to call? Give a look. <laughs> you still with me. I forgot. What the hell is... Give it to me. No. Yeah. Oh wait, did uh, you say no? Yes, I said no. What what do you mean no? What's going on? Did you know about this too? Yes. Oh. Okay, bye. Thump, 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 thump. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one way of getting rid of him for a bit. <laughs> did I say something <laughs> wrong? That just kinda came out. Uh, uh, yeah. They kind of slip. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, I'm a bad little guy. You are a bad little guy. Meanwhile. Oh, well. Now he knows. I guess. Uh-huh. It's kind of fun little list. I think that's what saved my life. You know, in that list. He could have shot me in the face. <laughs> Whatever. Hey. Just so you know, Korod, if you put him in the corpse recycle now, we know we get 30 points. Yay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me, could I have you and your crew of cobalts walk through the story? Ha ha! <laughs> no, not really. I kind of like them. Yeah, I kind of like them, too. Mm. 
<laughs> so. Another couple of days doing that. In that couple of days, did we hear from our captain? No, it's going to take six days to get a response back from him. And if you want to make that, uh, if you want to make that deal, you've got to leave before that six days are up. Yes, and that's fine. In fact, you need to leave somewhere in the next twenty-four hours, probably, just to be sure. You might make it in a couple of days early, but if you leave like a day or two early, you might st- you might miss it, or a day or two before it goes off, you might miss it. You're saying that we can't make in border and within a day. No, it's one of the green system. Wait, but we made it to the green. That's because I completely forgot it was supposed to take one d six in days in system. So, so fine. I hate it when God realizes he's bad at math. Um. <laughs> Uh, but I appreciate God. So, yeah. Let's take 1d6 days. Kib, find your wrench. So, give me the... I know where the wrench is. It's holding that structure together. Not that wrench. Just get your stuff together. We have to leave. Oh, okay. Kolovian, oh, Kolovian, come to the office, dear. Yeah. Colovian comes in. She, yeah, she's um, uh, kind of like uh, she she manages to make it up there. She's, looks like she she's got like a cup of coffee in her hand, and it looks like it, it's there's still steam rising off of it. She takes a sip, and it's a little does that thing where it's like oh, it's a little too hot still. Um, she doesn't go. Ah, okay. And she just kind of looks at it and and looks up at you. And she's like, uh, she's like. Yes, ma'am. So we have to go schmooze with the locals. Uh, we will be gone for probably two weeks because apparently it takes one to six days to get there and back. She just kind of stares at you blankly when you say one to six days, and she goes, "It's gonna take a few days." Is that what you're trying to say? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not quite awake yet. Right. <laughs> My apologies for not looking at the schedule to see when you're supposed to be up. Yeah. She's like, it's, uh, we're a little shorthanded. That's the, I mean, the Grimbuckle guys are great. They do a good job, but we really got to get more staff. Well, and we will work on that because I want more staff just as much as you do. But right now, you're in charge because there's no way we're leaving Nimbus in charge. Can you imagine? She's like, I don't even want to try. And I'm too tired to. And then she gets a sour look on her face. And then her eyes go really wide. And she goes, too late, I just imagined. Not good, not good. Need more coffee. And takes a drink and then realizes it's too hot. And then goes, ah! (laughs) Burn my tongue. Ow. Okay. uh, We'll keep the fires burning. Right. And we'll probably leave in a couple of hours. Until then, good luck waking up. Okay. And yeah. Um. So I will need a piloting check from my from our pilot here. And are you uh and are you having uh are you gonna have try to have Tawi uh, go with you? Just in case, or are you gonna, you know, wait, have her wait here and try to send a message back? No, because messages suck in the future. Um, that was me summoning Tali. Yeah, yeah, you, you get a uh, an answer. This this time it's a uh, like it, it's uh, Jababnin. That's on the that's on the deck. Like uh, apparently, Tawi is just kind of in her room or whatever. But he's on there, and he's, he's probably kind of, asleep right now. He's he the uh, the Jababnin is on the uh, you know this you know single legged frog cre you know alien creatures up there. He's kind of looks like he's 
going it looks like he's just basically he's monitoring stuff and then the screen comes up and he looks up and he's like it's like yeah what do you want what's it I say in perfectly fluent Chabubnin, well, I wanted to see the captain, but since you're here, I'll talk to you. So she and I were supposed to be having a thing, and she was going to help me do a thing. So is she awake right now, or should I call back later? Oh, Pedro, uh, I'll see. It's, it's like he cuts the audio, and it look, and you see him like punch up something on the on like the the. Uh, console and he watches the screen for a minute and he talks for a minute and he's like and he comes back he's like I'll patch it through and he, like uh, you get patched through and Tawi is kind of in her room um, and I think maybe she's like kind of like uh, it looks like she's maybe just got out of the shower or something um, she's got like a towel on her head um, and uh, you know uh, as she, you know, and, and she's kind of like wearing a, uh, like a bathrobe and whatnot. And she's, she's like, she's like, huh, Miss Defoe. She's like, uh, she's like, Miss Defoe, what the? She's like, so are we ready to do this thing then? So, with the information that we've gathered, our best bet is we're headed to. What is it, Korat? One of the uh, colonies. Um, something, something colony. Some place where the red straps. No. Not the red straps. Who is it? Red flaps? Mm. Whoever we're going to go and, like, you know, attack. The red booters? I booters. Really I really don't know why you cannot remember that. Yeah, but it cannot, and I've tried all day. But. <laughs> the red booters, then. But well, we're going to go to whoever's been buying the horrible drugs from the red booters. Some colony that he has a friend in. Right, then. So I suppose we keep our eyes on your afterburners and don't lose track then. Is that about what we're looking at here? Unless you'd like to lead. Kind of lead if you're only telling me that one place in the one place where there's people and things. I don't know where that is. Um, or at... Uh, he BRB'd us. Oh, okay. One moment. My, the current person with all that information is in, uh... Well, they're indisposed, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, here's a short song and dance from Kip. And we move the camera to Kip. We're exploring. We're having fun. We're going on. We're doing grand. It's so fun. And we're going. <laughs> I, I, I do clap. She, she, I, I think she chuckles at this. She, she goes, very amusing, but not exactly what I was looking for. She was like, she's like, uh, that's prime time right there. And she's like, she's like, I'm going to have to send a clip of that to me, to me first mate. He'll laugh his arse off. <laughs> yes. Hmm. So, kid. Since we have a moment while our other players are indisposed, how good are you at cannonballs and black holes? Well, I, I think I played once. I didn't do so well. What about you, Captain? I tried. I think I lost. The cannons and black holes? I have played the game a few times before. I'm more of an amateur than anything else. Ah, but... well, so is everybody on this ship as well. 
Uh, perhaps if we have time later, after you've completed your other missions, as well as this one. When you return, so to speak, we should have a tournament. See if we can make some money. Hey, perhaps. It sounds a thing. It sounds a, a, a it sounds a thing that uh, might be worthwhile. Right. To, it sounds a bit of a laugh. A laugh. I. Yeah. So, um. He's like, I tell you what. Whenever you've got the coordinates, go ahead and patch them through to me. We'll be waiting for them. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Click. Yeah. She. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Mm. Thank you for just going with the flow, Kib. I appreciated your song and dance. Now. Oh, he hasn't stopped. He's still dancing and singing random words. <laughs> he's just in the back. He's just dancing around where he can in his seat and just saying random things that don't make any sense. Yeah, it's like you turn around to tell him. It's like you turn around to tell Kim that, that thanks for the distraction. He's, he's still back there doing it. <laughs> About ten minutes into this, Pa will pull out his cryo pistol and be like, "Please." Please. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I'm Can like, ha, put it away. <laughs> Go check the other room for bombs. Whatever. It'd be f- way easier if we just put them in the corpse recycler. That's enough, ha. Huh? We don't say that out loud. Uh, nice. Uh, so anyway, Kib, if we do well, remember to steal as many chairs for the conference room from that ship before they get there. Yeah, it's not fun having the people that come to talk just stand there, hold their coffee or whatever. If we have more places for people to sit, it would be more fun because it would be more personal and then like, it wouldn't be so hard maybe. And then we have more chairs. Where are we getting chairs? You need chairs. Yeah. We get more chairs. Chairs are good. Gotta have more chairs. Okay. Uh, hmm. Meanwhile, on the other side of Cadillac Ranch. Where did he be right back? All right. Oh, hey, Brian, you're back. There he is. Yeah, I'm back. All right. Why do we need Brian? What were we doing? Oh, I couldn't remember the name of the colony that we're going to so that the other ship can come with us. So we need coordinates for that planet. Oh, yeah, I definitely give you the coordinates. All right. So is everybody here ready to go? Yes. Okay. So long as we all have our stuff ready for this, then we send coordinates and get on our little shuttlecraft, and we head that way. Make it so. But you need me to go make it so. Hang on. Yes, I need a piloting check. Okay. Can I not take 20? No. (laughs) Ha. Oh, nice. You did 20 anyway. You already did. <laughs> See, and, uh, uh, I think that actually ge- rolling a 20 on that might give you an advantage in your time travel time. Let me double check that real quick because it takes four days just off the roll. But I think rolling a 20 on your uh, pilot and check to get somewhere actually shortens that a la the Starship Operations Manual because they have critical successes. Yeah. Starship critical effects, rolling a natural 20 captain, action chief mate, engineer, magic officer, pilot, worst pilot. Uh, maneuver, it's done. Okay. Um, rolling a natural 20. No, it doesn't say anything for that. Necessarily open crew. 
Magic Officer, Pilot Directions, Maneuver, Fancy Save Through Incoming Fire, da, 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 Full Power Save. One starship's difference between turns, stunt, back off, barred, evade, flip and drive, yeah. Yeah. No additional effect, unfortunately, for rolling a twenty on the getting to and from uh, places. But it takes four days, but I think as we kind of Actually, like... Actually, on navigation and piloting, the yeah. skill. Oh, okay. Uh, page 145, core. Navigate. It says, uh, usually requires a successful check of 25. So. Yeah. For what? For what exactly? Plotting a course from where you're actually from. Plotting a course from there to your actual destination usually requires a successful DC of 25. Piloting check. Or. When you arrive at your intended destination, your Starship's engines may have gained the glitching from the critical system. Oh, uh, okay. All right. All right. And that's, like I said, it's right there. If you're familiar with the region, I can drop it. So, we're not that familiar yet. So, But either way, that's the 25, so I did good. All right, yeah, so, yeah. And I think as we kind of like, I think as we kind of end, like we end with the shuttle, with your shuttle pulling away from the, like, uh, from the station and heading off, uh, like maybe we get that view from behind as you got, as you kick in the burr, as like you, as you sort of like drift far enough away and then kick the burner that like for, with maneuvering thrusters and then kick in the burners to head off and, uh, Maybe we get like the um, the plasma scar um, lighting it up, uh, lighting up, and following you too. And that's like our final shot for for the night. Um, yeah. let, let's go ahead and get uh, players' choice and uh, sign offs going and what have you. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm trying not to. Uh, but, uh, let's start with, uh, let's start with, uh, Kib. You want to start sign off? You want to do your sign off first here? Okay. Um, I'm Scott. I play Kib, which is kind of fun. He's got the fast pace talk thing. Not very bright, but hey, he got paid a little bit. He's all right with that. He got paid more than he did before. So he's okay. Um, what else am I in? So on Saturday we do lands of Hyparia. Got it. Yeah, yep. I'm getting better at it. The more you we are. play, the more I remember the name. Yay! And my brain just forgot everything that we did in that, but we're having fun. Oh, we went into a place and we tried to fight things. We're in the ground. Yay! I don't know. I think that's all I'm in. Yay! Yes. All right. I uh, Brian, you want to go next? Sure. I'm Brian C. I play Curad today. Um, yeah, I get to go to a party. Maybe make some connections. Maybe find out where this gang is that ship is that we're looking for. But we'll find out next week. Um, you can also find me on Saturdays running the land of Iberia, where, yes, they are underground. They have been fighting a lot of undead. And certain people are getting disease left, right, and center, which is kind of fun and a pain in the butt to track for the GM. But that's basically it. Next. All right. All right. I'm David the Gnome. Uh... I played Philip Defoe, uh, and I now have a necrograph to show people that we do good work, and another graph just because I like the flair. And if they ever try to go dragging on me, I got that shit covered. Um, other than that, that's all I'm playing in this week. Um, I'm enjoying this so far. It's a little less fighty than you know some people want, but we'll get there. 
And other than that, I think that's it. Oh, uh, my friends, they have cool stuff that you should check out. Uh, there's music, there's t-shirts, there's stickers. It just depends on what you want. You'll find it all on the thing. And with that, Chester, I believe it's your turn. <laughs> well, let's get the bookkeeping out of the way, first of all. You each get 3,600 XP, uh, XP for the session. Thank uh, you. And, uh, yeah, I tried to give you guys solid things to get some XP off of so that you can, you know, kind of push a little on the early goings. Uh, our... Uh, Player's Choice Award for tonight goes to Kib. Kib gets an extra 50 XP. Um, I know you just said it, but tell me what the actual experience was again. 3,600? Yep, 3,600. Um, okay. Oh. And, yeah. Um, with that said, uh, yeah, I am the Just a King Zerat. Uh, currently, this is the only program I'm in right now. That may change at some point in the near future. I don't know. Um, I have some thoughts and ideas. It just depends on if other people are interested in them, too. Um, other than that, uh, you can occasionally keep me uh, catch me on my other channel of Zerat, playing video games. Uh, I think the last thing I played on there was Pathfinder Wrath of Righteous. I uh, might do a little bit more of that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's a. I'm I'm really interested to see where this is go. You know, gonna head. Uh, we got our first big mission. I, we got our first big mission uh, going on, and uh, you know, well, is uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so, stay tuned. Stay with us. Uh, with that said, I think that's all we got tonight. So. Uh, Let's uh, you know, get a bring out the dragon and let's go. Are you trying to bring out the dragon? <laughs>